the job of an engineer to design machines, then the civil engineer has quite literally the biggest challenge. That's because the machines they design are buildings, tunnels, roads, bridges. They're huge things. They're the biggest thing man can construct and also people live inside them. So they have to supply them with light, air, electricity, heat, as well as protecting the people inside from the wind and the rain outside. And I'd like to focus on the job of a structural engineer in particular. They're the ones that design the building itself. They make it strong enough to support all the weight of the people inside safely and make sure it doesn't fall down. Now, I would hope that the building you're in right now feels pretty solid. Yeah, maybe a lorry drives past and you can feel a little bit of vibration. But, but maybe sometimes another lorry drives past and, and it feels much more stronger, maybe even makes the windows rattle. Why the difference? Well, that's because everything around us has a frequency at which it wants to naturally vibrate. Just like when you pluck a guitar string or you twang a ruler on the edge of a desk. And that's called its natural frequency. Imagine you're down the park and you're pushing your friends on the swing. You push at the same frequency that they swing at and their swing gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you were to push them slower or faster, then half the time you'd be pushing and, and they're not even there. Or even worse, they're coming towards you and your push slows them down. So it's only when the frequency of your pushing matches exactly with the frequency of their swinging that the swing gets bigger and bigger. A bridge is just the same. It can be pushed with a gust of wind. And when the wind gusts, it causes the bridge to sway. If the wind is gusting at exactly the same frequency that the bridge would naturally sway at, then each gust causes it to sway more and more and it eventually collapses. That's exactly what happened one day in 1940 at the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. On a particularly windy day, the gusting frequency of the wind exactly matched the frequency of the bridge, causing it to sway more and more and collapse. Luckily there was enough warning to get everyone out of the way in time so no one was hurt, but it does go to show that it's important to get this right. It's not just the wind that can cause buildings to move, earthquakes do it as well. Let me explain what this is. This represents a skyscraper and I can make the ground shake at different frequencies. So if I make the ground shake at a lower frequency than the natural frequency of the tower, you can see there's not much response. If I make it shake faster than the natural frequency of the tower, then it's, it's shaking around a bit faster, but it's in no danger of falling down. Whereas, if I make the base shake at exactly the natural frequency of the tower, then just like with the swing, we'll see the response build up and build up and it will eventually collapse. Nope. So how do structural engineers stop this sort of thing happening to their building? Well, we can't really ask the wind not to blow at a certain frequency. But just like tuning a guitar or changing the length of a ruler, we can tune a building so that its natural frequency is higher than anything it's likely to see during its lifetime. The frequency is dependent on the stiffness of the building and its weight. So we can increase the stiffness or make a building lighter to increase the frequency. We can make a building stiffer by making its beams and columns bigger, but of course when you make them bigger it increases the weight, so you've got to be very careful about where you put the bigger beams and columns to get the maximum benefit without making the building too heavy. Skyscrapers are getting higher all the time and we're already building one a kilometre high. But it's not the strength of the materials that's the limiting factor, it's the way that they deal with these frequencies. 